In this video tutorial, we're going to be solving a problem involving complex loading. And all we mean by complex loading is when stresses exist in more than one direction. So here we have two stresses acting in mutually perpendicular directions. We have a stress sigma x and we have a stress sigma y. Now we're going to assume that our plate in the top left hand corner is constrained along the left hand edge here and constrained along the top edge here. So if those two edges are fixed, our stress sigma x in the x direction is going to cause the plate to deform and our stress sigma y in the y direction is also going to cause that plate to deform. Now, when we introduce complex loading or when we talk about complex loading, we need to be aware of something called the Poisson's ratio. Because if we were to disregard our stress sigma y and just apply our stress sigma x, then we would see deformation in this direction as a result of the stress sigma x but we would also see a narrowing or a deformation in the y direction here due to sigma x. And that's because any stress applied in the x direction also has an impact in the y direction. We've seen in previous tutorials how this relates to something called our Poisson's ratio down here in the bottom left hand corner. And the Poisson's ratio is basically a proportion by which the strain in one direction causes an induced strain in the perpendicular directions. So we have some details about the plate there. We know that the plate has dimensions 50 millimeters by 80 millimeters. We know that the material used has an elastic modulus of 205 gigapascals and a Poisson's ratio of 0.29. And we know that the stress applied in the X direction is 22 megapascals, whereas the stress applied in the Y direction is 14 megapascals. The equations that we need to use here link our strains. So on the right hand side we have the strain in the x direction equals 1 over the elastic modulus multiplied by the stress in the x direction minus the Poisson's ratio times the stress in the y direction. So what we see here is that our applied stress causes a strain but also the stress in the opposite direction in the y direction also causes a strain in the x direction and it's linked by the proportionality of our Poisson's ratio. Now we can reverse that for our strain in the y direction, where our strain in the y direction is 1 over the elastic modulus times the stress in the y direction minus the Poisson's ratio times the stress in the x direction. So what we see here is both of the stresses affect both of the strains. Now recall that when we talk about strain, what the strain really indicates is the amount of deformation. Strain is change in length over original length, so it's a measure of how much deformation we have when compared to the length itself. So let's run some numbers on this. Let's first of all calculate our strain in the x direction. We have strain in the x direction equals 1 over the elastic modulus. Now when we input our elastic modulus, we need to take care this time. We need to make a note that we have gigapascals for our elastic modulus and we have megapascals for each of our stresses. Therefore, our elastic modulus is 205 times 10 to the power 9 for giga. And each of our stresses then, our stress in the x direction, is 22 times 10 to the 6 for megapascals, minus our Poisson's ratio, 0 0.29, times our stress in the y direction of 14 times 10 to the 6 for megapascals. Now running that through the calculator we get a strain in the x direction equal to 8.7512 times 10 to the minus 5. Now note that that's the same as 0 0.0000 87512. So we're using standard form there to represent that value. Note here that the strain values are always relatively small. The other thing to note is that strain doesn't have units because in effect it's a length divided by a length, so therefore it's a dimensionless quantity. Let's calculate our strain in the y direction then. Our strain in the y direction is 1 over 205 times 10 to the 9. Stress in the y direction, 14 times 10 to the 6, minus our Poisson's ratio times our stress in the x direction of 22 times 10 to the 6, 
and running that through the calculator gives us a strain in the y direction equal to 3.7171 times 10 to the power minus 5 once again. So now we have our strain values, we can calculate the change in length in each of those directions. And once we've found the change in length, we can find the new area and therefore we can find the change in area. So there's quite a few steps involved here. One piece of theory worth remembering is that strain is change in length divided by original length. Therefore, if we know our original dimension for the x direction was 50 millimeters, and we know our original dimension in the y direction was 80 millimeters, then from there we can determine our new dimensions. Now we know from our formula at the bottom there that strain is change in length over original length. It therefore follows that change in length equals epsilon times the original length. Now if we wanted to find the new length, which I'm just going to call L, then the new length would be the change in length plus the original length. Change in length plus the original length gives us the new length. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the new dimension of the plate in the x direction and the new dimension of the plate in the y direction. Let's make a note of our strain values and clear a little space. Okay, so we've just noted that our new length equals our strain times the original length plus the original length. So let's do that for each of our directions. Our new length in the x direction is epsilon in the x direction, which is 8.7512 times 10 to the minus 5, times our original x dimension, which was 50. And then we need to add the original length of 50. The new length in the x direction then equals 50. 0 0.00438 millimeters accurate to five decimal places. Let's repeat then for our y dimension, ly equals our strain in the y direction, 3.7171 times 10 to the minus five times the original dimension of 80 plus 80. Once again, we're working in millimetres, so we know that the value Ly that we calculate is also going to be in millimetres, equals 80.00297 millimetres. So now we can calculate the new area of the plate, because we know that area is simply the width times the height. So we've got area equals... 50.00438 times 80.00297 giving me a new area equal to 4000.5 millimeters squared. Now in order to determine our change in area, all we need to do is subtract the original area from our new area. So therefore, the change in area, delta A, equals the new area, 4,000.5, minus the original area, and the original area is just 50 times 80. Giving us a change in area equal to 0 0.5 millimetre squared. So we're not seeing a particularly significant change in area there, but the reason being is the dimensions of the plate are relatively small, and the stresses we're applying are relatively small also. In the next video, we're going to look at another example, except in that example, the strains are going to be known, and we're going to calculate the stresses that need to be applied in order to cause those strain values.